AI become a problem to artists and animators? Attack on Titan is something. I was a weird kid. That's how people make money. Hello, and welcome back to the Manga Education Podcast. I'm your host, Brand Chen. I am a manga, webtoon, anime, video game creator. I run a studio that creates uh, manga and webtoons for a lot of publishers around the world. Today, I'm going to be answering your questions about the anime, manga, webtoon industry that you've been submitting to me. So let's get right into it. Hendrix Inks. So Patreon questions are prioritized, so I'm going to be answering those first. Hendrix Inks. Is there a reason why there aren't any manhwa publishers, at least from what I've seen, that focus on monthly publishing? I know weekly has shorter chapters and quicker uploads, but is monthly just unreliable in the manhwa space? So I'd have to look at data behind the monthly thing. I would say that there is significant drop off if you're doing a monthly project. Usually the Japanese manga industry, because there's monthly magazines, like creators and, or, and readers are expecting that magazine to only come out monthly and people can just buy it as they come. But in the web space, the way that people make money is very different. It's very focused on this quick, quick, quick reading experience. I'm binge reading something. I need to know what happens now. And so I'm going to pay money to find out what happens next. Or it's like, oh, I read 10 chapters. The next 15 to 20, 30 chapters are paywalled. I need to find out what happens next. If you're doing something on a monthly cadence, you're not going to be making any money off of like the paid chapters. And that's how people make money on these digital things. So it's kind of this quantity game in the webtoon space where they need to pump out a lot of chapters to get people to binge read, to get people to spend money. And that's how we make money. And that's why they're probably not doing it versus like a monthly magazine. You know, you're putting out less magazines, but um, you're also putting out less content. So therefore it equalizes the cost, right? So I think that there's just a lot more urgency in the manhwa space that requires for creators to um, be producing at a weekly schedule. Um, and it sucks. I think monthly as an example would be would be awesome but when you think about it in the webtoon space people would not wait a month for a chapter they would be upset and then they would move on to the next thing pretty quickly so higan bana asks a question every single patreon every manga education podcast episode in your opinion what are three manga you believe to be prime examples of the best in manga what are some aspects of these works that put them above the rest for you. There's a lot of really good ones out there. Usually a lot of seinen manga are just a lot deeper, but they don't appeal to a really large audience. So I'll say a seinen manga that is pretty interesting to me is probably One Punch Man. I would say that One Punch Man is interesting because it's very heartfelt at times. It's very comedic at times. The art is some of the best in the entire industry for Japan. Um, just In terms of comics, Yusuke Murata is probably one of the greatest artists in history. History, you know, tied for me with uh, Takahiko Inoue. But I would say One Punch Man is a really interesting thing because it has so many characters, so many characters that you care about. A main character that's so overpowered that it's almost comedic, yet somehow you're still reading, even though that the, the overpowered trope is usually very unappealing to most readers. And it's a seinen project, but yet the entire world is very is very much watching it. Um, so I'd say that's probably a manga that's, that's really interesting to me, personal interest in it. Man, I want to say Vinland Saga. Saga. Again, character development in that is very incredible. I think the big focus on character is, is so incredible. And also the thematic aspect of Vinland Saga is also very beautiful um, without spoiling anything. So I'd say Vinland Saga, again, is something that is so character focused, so beautifully done. It's written as a piece of literature. It's not written to appease an audience in a particular way, which, you know, a lot of people can get lost in the sauce as you're creating because you want to appeal to an audience, of course. Um, but Vinland Saga is really just like a piece of literature that is just meant to be a good story and a good depiction of a character that is evolving over a long period of time. And it also takes place in a period um, that is not like very common for Japanese writers to write about, which is like Vikings. What is the last one? I really liked such a basic answer, but I think Attack on Titan is something that is so gruesome yet enjoyed by the entire world. I think it's so much deeper than just like what you think it is going to be. It's a shonen series at the start and then switches into a seinen series very quickly. I think Attack on Titan is a tragic story. It is very well foreshadowed. The twists in it are very strong. The characters in it are very strong. It's just one of those stories that almost feels like perfectly done, especially for the anime space. Higan Bond is also asking, is there a mythology that you have not worked with yet, but would like to try out? Um, 
I think I haven't done much in Japanese mythology because I think it's too basic TBH, right? There's a lot of Japanese series that already work with Japanese um, Shinto gods and, and religions. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, there's, there's already enough content out there that's following Japanese gods, but I think I would be interested in tapping into that. I'm a little bit nervous about doing anything with Hindu gods because I saw what happened to Record of Ragnarok. I think there was a bad depiction of Shiva in, in, in that series and uh, it got banned from India. And India is a pretty large demographic for um, anime and manga. And so, you know, that's a, that's the total shame. So uh, trying to avoid um, any offense there, because obviously depiction of God is is a, a God or divinity is uh, you have to be very careful about that. And I made a video about being careful about um, writing about people's religions. Alexios Drake 62 says, I'm a comic artist who does little skits. How do I transition to a comic series? So you're talking about little skits as in, I'm assuming like a four coma or like a Calvin and Hobbes type short comic. I'm assuming, or like a comic strip. If you want to transition to a comic series, make sure that your series is scalable. So like something that can, you know, instead of telling a story across four to five panels, try and tell a story across 20 to 30 pages with five pages per panel. Five panels per page, I mean. You know, I, I'd say you need to practice probably on the writing side, um, because I, I think if you've done the skits, or the, the short comic strips, you probably, you know, not much is changing in terms of the art that you're gonna be doing. You're still drawing panels, um, but what is gonna be changing is how you pace the narrative, right? You're not gonna be telling a story across four panels. You're gonna be telling a story across maybe a hundred, right? And so thinking about that and, and, and practicing that is probably how you're gonna be able to break free from doing short comics to doing longer narratives. Um, Jan Ortuga says double kill release date, um, hopefully end of the summer. Now moving on to questions from Instagram. What advice do you have for someone who keeps making stories but always switches to a different idea? This is something that I used to do a lot in high school when I was writing my novels. I would write a novel, 100 pages, be like, ah, I'm bored, start another one, 100 pages, now I have two incomplete stories that are not touched and it's been months since I touched either project and so therefore, you know, if I were to go back to project one, um, it would take me a little bit of ramp up time to even be back in the groove, which is inefficient way to be writing. You know, I always am an advocate for batch writing because when you end up in a groove, it's just a lot easier to write that thing. For example, for me, I used to work on one novel at a time and I would be able to just pump out that novel in like a month pretty much if I just worked on it every single day. So, you know, I think part of it's like, you know, hey, keep the second idea on the back burner if you're having trouble finishing anything. If you get ideas for that, just write it down, write out down the ideas. And then when you switch to idea number two to start doing it, you can have those ideas on the back burner in the notebook with you so that when you start it, you're not starting from ground zero. But making sure that you finish the first project, if that's something that you have a trouble to have trouble with, um, it should be a priority for you. So it's probably just a little bit of um, self-control, self-control. Well, God Game or just a goblin get animated? Thank you for the amazing stories. Uh, God Game is in production for an anime. Um, just a goblin, we'll see. <laughs> How do you write fighting scenes? So fighting scenes are super fun to write. Personally, I was a weird kid. I played with action figures until I was like 17 years old. I'm not even joking. And the reason I did that was partially because it was fun, but also because it helps me choreograph the scenes very visually. Like I used to have this like Spider-Man figurine and I would fight, he would be fighting imaginary characters. And because I was doing that, I was basically imagining how he would be moving and all that kind of stuff and moving his body. And then I started to engrave like choreography into my mind as a result of playing with these action figures, which is kind of funny. So when I write fight scenes, you know, again, writing for any sort of dramatic moment, um, I follow Kisho Tenketsu, which is again, the manga writing structure for how you write manga. If you want to learn more on that, you should Google it. Um, and then, yeah, I try and choreograph scenes very, um, very akin to like what you would see in, in anime, live action film, video games. You know, I think that studying a lot of choreography from different sources can be very useful to contributing to your fight scenes. And yeah, I could probably make a whole course or thing on how to write fight scenes honestly it's a it's a 
skill for sure that I can't capture in one in one uh, video. So I would say, you know, study what these other fight scenes do that is entertaining to you. Think about what's entertaining to you and why these, these fight scenes are entertaining to you and then try and execute on that. One last question. Which manga author inspired you the most to make stories? You know, it's interesting. I think Akira Toriyama was the first manga I read, which was Dragon Ball. So that was beautiful because I was I was like, wow, someone can really create an entire world in their in their head. But I have to draw to be able to do this. Oba and Obata, who did Death Note and Bakuman um, and Platinum Ends, showed me that you can create a very beautiful project without being an artist as well. So I'd probably say some combination of those two. I think Neil Gaiman is also a writer that I also look up to because he's written so many different things and all of those things have been bangers and I'm just like in awe of his prolificness and uh, the quality of his work that he puts out, you know, um, and how he's dedicated to himself to his craft. So I'd say like Neil Gaiman is also another person that I, I think is very incredible um, that has been very inspiring. And yeah, I mean, I can go on and on. George R. R. Martin, Game of Thrones taught me a lot about characters and, you know, different characters' perspectives and, and world building. That's on the Western side. And then on the Japanese side, it's again, one, Yusuke Murata. Yeah, I've taken inspiration from a lot of, a lot of different creators through the years, but I'll, I'll leave it at that because it's a lot. I'll end on this. In the future, AI become a problem to artists and animators? I hope not. I hope that AI becomes a tool that animators and artists can use to get rid of all the boring stuff that we don't want to do. I really hope so. And I hope that it's not in this weird world where, you know, these tech companies are trying to be like, hey, type in, create a comic for me in the style of Jujutsu Kaisen. And it just pumps out a freaking comic for you. That's not creativity, you know? Um, I would say creating from the soul is still something that I hope that projects will always be doing and creating using tools to eradicate stuff that no person would want to do for the rest of their life is how I see AI being beneficial to the anime and manga space, really. Because I do see that there is a problem with the manga space, right? The creators can't work fast enough. There's enormous demand for manga. There's enormous demand for anime. They're all burnt out. So there is, there is this place and this space for AI to help make a difference and make it so that people can go home and see their families. But I am worried that there's investors and business people who will be like, let's just replace all of them. Let's replace all the artists. Let's replace all the creatives. Let's just have only us executives at the top typing in things and then we just produce anime. That's not how they're going to get things made. There's no way that those types of projects would ever beat something created by an actual human. It's mind baffling that people think this way, but yeah, some people think that way. So, you know, I hope that it's not a problem. I hope that there's proper laws in place also with regards to training data, right? If you're going to license your data to someone, they're paying you for it if they use it in their film or whatever. And I hope that people are not, especially executives, if you're an executive and you're watching this, please, you should not be thinking about replacing creatives. You should be thinking about ways to augment and give them better tools to do their job better. Anyway, that's um, how we're going to end the video. Uh, make sure to subscribe, like, and if you have questions that you want to ask about the manga, webtoon, anime industry, drop a question in the comment section. I'll see you guys in next week's video. Peace.